Uh, our next speaker is, is Paul, who actually had a, had a Climate Week NYC event before us with the launch of the latest report. Paul Dickinson, who's a, a founder and CEO of the Carbon Disclosure Project and a long-term friend of the Climate Group. Paul. Thanks, Steve. Thank you so much. <laughs> Brevity is the soul of wit. Thanks and congratulations for putting this wonderful event together. The Carbon Disclosure Project works on behalf of corporations, governments and investors to gather information. We actually represent 534 investors with assets of 64 trillion. That is trillion with a T, it's a big number. Now at 9 a.m. this morning, we announced the Carbon Disclosure Project 2010 responses, an analysis from PricewaterhouseCoopers. And notice that 70% of the S&P 500 and 82% of the 500 largest companies in the world have reported through CDP, and that data is available to you free of charge from our website. We're a not-for-profit organization. Profitable investment in greenhouse gas emissions reduction is driven by consumer preference and government policy and saving money. Some people suggest responding to climate change threatens American jobs. That is impossible. Either we fail to respond to climate change and eventually the impacts will mean uh, a floundering economy with far fewer jobs for everyone, the economy is owned by the environment and nature doesn't do bailouts. Or if we respond profitably, the provision of low carbon technologies and solutions has the potential to transform the way businesses use energy, communicate and operate. The opportunities are huge. This will create jobs. But let's focus our attentions on that critical battle for the future. This morning, Steve Wesley spoke from California by telepresence from San Francisco about the fight against Proposition 23 and how clean technology investors are fighting to save California's inspiring AB32. To those opposing technologies that can stop climate change, let me quote Churchill. You do your worst and we'll do our best. I emphasize this point because in my political analysis, governments can be weak in the face of powerful business lobbies. If businesses force government to take no action on climate change, we face unprecedented changes in our climate that cause chaos to our society and economy. Or business can support government action on climate change and profit as a result. If you'll forgive me, I'll quote Churchill once final time when he was talking about the Battle of Britain, and I think this perfectly describes the battle over Proposition 23. The odds are great, our margins small, and the stakes are infinite. Thank you.